Hey guys, Jimmy Vegas here, and in this mini Unity tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can play a cutscene in your game just by entering a trigger. Don't forget, click on subscribe and click that bell icon as well to stay up to date with everything I upload on video game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So, a cutscene. It doesn't really matter how you set your cutscene up, uh, whether you use a camera with animation, whether you use a, a timeline, wh whatever you use, as long as it's either uh, like a video that plays or a camera, it's going to work either way. Because the whole premise of this is our player, in this case first person controller, but it will work with a third person controller as well. When they enter the trigger, we want the cutscene to play. Now I have a camera set up that just has a simple animation that just goes all the way over here and that would represent our cutscene. So we want our player to walk over here and then that cutscene trigger. So there's the controller and there's the camera. I'm going to disable the camera up here so I'm going to untick it because we don't want that to play at the same time as the player being active. And to get this working properly we need to firstly create a C sharp script. So right click create C sharp script We'll call this cut scene enter. And then we need to open that up in Visual Studio. This is probably going to take some time because Visual Studio tends to be like this when you first start it up. So I really should have opened it before I actually did the tutorial. But either way, I'll use this time to explain how this is going to work. So we're going to have a section on our level that when we walk into it that will act as the trigger and then it will execute whatever code that we write in this script. So we're going to basically say when uh, a trigger enters it then we're going to switch off that player and switch on that cutscene. That cutscene will then play out. And obviously you can go further after that, you can change how it's done, but that's entirely up to you. I'm showing you the mechanics of how you would trigger a cutscene in your game. So, it's loaded up now, and what we're going to do is get rid of Void Star and Void Update because we do not need them. We're going to have two variables, the first being the player, the second being the cutscene camera. So public game object, the player and obviously like I said it'll work with first person and third person then public game object cut scene cam semicolon then after that we need to have the method on trigger enter so void on trigger enter and it doesn't need to be private that's fine if you're dealing with tags, that's completely fine as well. Um, in this scene, because there's nothing else that will collide with it, there's no purpose to be using tags. However, if you have a bigger scene, you probably would be better off using tags. Either way, all we need to do is on trigger enter, we need to say cutscene cam dot set active true semicolon and then the player dot set active false semicolon and save so i always feel it's a good idea to turn a camera on before you turn the previous camera off reason being is you could uh, introduce a little bit of uh, a flicker per se because think about it if you're turning a camera off before you turn another one on there could be a moment there that would prevent any camera from rendering. So I always like to turn something on before it goes off. And that's exactly what is happening here. As soon as we enter the trigger, we're turning on the cutscene and then turning off the player, theoretically in the same frame, but just to be sure, I always do it first. So head back into Unity, and now we just need to set up that trigger. So I think we're gonna have the trigger panned across here. So if we take a look at where our player is in relation to where we want the trigger, we may need to move the player back. Actually, no, I think we should be all right. So I'm going to bring in the trigger here. So game object, 3D object, cube. And then let's place this cube in the scene where we would want the trigger to occur. In this case, about there. And let's change the scale so as it goes all the way across. Round about that should do it. Obviously, you could be more precise in your game. I'm just doing this to you know, speed things along a little. 
Uh, turn off mesh renderer because we don't want to be able to see any texture or well material on there I should say and then make sure you tick is trigger on the collider that's crucial because that will obviously make the trigger active then we just need to drag and drop that cutscene script onto that trigger cube you can rename the cube if you want to and then just set the two variables the first one being the player and the second one being the camera and now let's press play and as soon as it starts we should be able to control our player no problem as intended there we go so if we walk this way now we should trigger that cutscene there we go now obviously this cutscene uh, will loop round and round however you would just put extra coding in to say when it's finished you can resume the player and basically all you need to do from that is use um, an, a, a coroutine. I was going to say I enumerate, but that's a coroutine. Um, and to be honest, I'm probably going to get questions about that, aren't I? So let's do it now. So the cutscene is actually 10 seconds long. So what I'm going to do is turn off the trigger on this. So this dot game object dot get component and spiky brackets box collider up close bracket dot enabled equals false and like i said we need to set a coroutine and it, it's actually real simple it's just going to take another minute to write i enumerator and let's just call it finish cut up close bracket open curly bracket and then yield return new wait for seconds and then 10 because our cutscene is 10 seconds long however long your cutscene is you would place in there after that 10 seconds the player dot set active true and cutscene cam dot set active false and then the last thing to do down here would be to start coroutine and then the name of the coroutine finish cut open close bracket close bracket semicolon and save so now we've gone that one step further and after we played the cutscene we'll be able to resume play no problem i knew i was going to get questions about it so i figured why not just write it instead of being a little bit lazy so once we're back in the game let's walk this way trigger that cutscene and as soon as it finishes Eventually, we'll be able to resume play with our player, like so. So you noticed a quick little flash there. Uh, it kind of reset. Don't worry about that. That's just uh, the timing of this here. So if I change that to probably nine seconds, you won't get that uh, glitch again. Well, that's not really a glitch. It's just the way it works. So that's all you would need to do there. So guys, I hope that's helped. And yeah, if you need to know any more, let me know in the comments below. And yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys.